Evangelism, How to Witness to Your Peers, Part 1 and Part 2. Part 1, basically the basics. What is evangelism? Evangelism is a spread of doctrine by public preaching or personal witness. Anybody that doesn't understand that definition. Everybody pretty much gets it. God commands. God commands us in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Therefore go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and behold, I am with you always to the end of age. It's important to remember this particular slide because it's going to come up again later. What is a disciple? Characteristics of a disciple. A disciple is someone that follows Christ and loves God with everything that we have. A disciple by God's grace become more and more like Christ through a life of faith and obedience. So I wanted to ask you all, what are some characteristics of a disciple? Anybody? Somebody? Okay. Good. I like y'all. Um, and here's some of the characteristics that I looked up that actually found, along with some that I put in there. Um, passionately committed to Jesus. Is sensitive and submitted to the Holy Spirit, evaluates life according to biblical studies, lives morally pure and works with cultural understanding, and is evangelistically bold and one who witnesses for Christ as a way of life. Now, what's stopping you? So pretty much this question comes about what's stopping you from ministering to others or witnessing really to others. Now, listen very closely. Most Christians can give a number of reasons why they cannot or should not disciple other people. I don't feel called to minister. I just have too much on my plate right now. I don't have time to invest in other people. I don't know enough. I have too many issues of my own. Or I'll start once I get my life in order. Do any of these questions like apply to any of y'all? Do y'all feel this way? Yeah. You do? Okay, so like, tell me, talk to me. Um, well, I, well I, most of my friends are on the ground. I try to live according to the Bible, they you know that I feel myself. So if I try to go at them and tell them that they're going, and I know they're going to come back at me and say, well, I know they're going to come back. And that's the thing, like, I mean, nobody is perfect, but, I mean, at least they know that, you know, can they at least see that Christ is okay. in you? I mean, at least you show them something yeah. where they feel like they could at least listen to something that you say. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's good. So, have anyone here ever witnessed to someone before? Might have told them basically they were doing something wrong or... Okay. Can you tell me about it? You want to talk about it? Okay. <laughs> so, nobody in here has ever witnessed besides Amber. Um, not necessarily witnessed, but I told somebody before. Okay. Do you want to tell them to share it? Yeah, I um, there is a, um, a new student in class, and for some reason she wouldn't take off her, um, her hood, and the teacher didn't say anything about it, so he just left it alone. But then there was this kid, he was late, um, so he didn't know that. So he pulled off her hood, and she had part of her, um, her eyebrows were gone, and some of her hair was gone. And um, he started laughing, so I was like, we were wrong for doing that. Yeah, just go home with those big laughing and everything. And that's when I just said, 
Well, if you laugh when somebody else is pain, then that's something wrong. And that was really, it's just what I was going to say something. Because he's going to remember it. He's going to remember that. And it's going to come back later in life. And he's going to think back on when somebody told him, I shouldn't have done that or that was wrong. And I have a story that no one else has one. But um, being in college, we come across a lot of different people. And when I moved into a suite with three other girls, one of the girls was always upset. She was always angry. She was always staying in her room, like you would notice that there was something going on with her. I never wanted to say anything to her, speak to her, because I figured she would have an attitude towards me. Um, but one day, like, she just came to me and just started talking to me about whatever was going on. I couldn't understand, like, why she kept coming to me and talking to me, I don't know. And I knew at that moment that there was something that God wanted me to tell her, but I didn't have it on, on hand at the time. All I could do was just listen to everything that she was saying. And I talked to one of my other sweetmates and I asked her if she knew what was going on with her because they were really close. And she was just like, no, and I'm not sure. I just know it's about a boy and blah, 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 and this And I told her, I said, well, God wants me to tell her something, but I'm afraid to go tell her because I'm afraid she's going to get mad at me. And she was like, well, if God wants you to do it, then you should do it. You shouldn't just sit back and not do it at all. I said, well, yeah, I know you're right, but I'm just so worried about how she may react to me. And a lot of times when you have to tell people something, you can't worry about how they're going to react to you. Let God deal with that. You just be obedient and take that step and do what God actually do. So I told her about the situation, and then I went and spoke to the girl. And at the time, she was being very, she was rejecting me. She was being very, like, closed-minded. And, and I'm sitting there feeling like, Lord, why do you have me sitting here in front of her talking to her right now? And she's acting like this. But I guarantee y'all, this summer she texted me and she was like, I'm so glad you came to me and told me that I really needed that because I really just didn't want to finish school. I didn't want to do this. And now that you told me that and I listened, my life was so much better. And me and her are like this now. Like, it's crazy how things happen. So, this, if it's on your heart to tell someone something, you know it's from God and you're contemplating with it and you're feeling like, well, maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. And then that's the Holy Spirit most likely telling you to do it if you if your first instinct is to say something. So just be mindful of that. Um, as convincing as these excuses may seem to us, Jesus commands don't come with exception clauses. He doesn't tell us to follow unless we're busy. He doesn't call us to love our neighbors unless we don't feel prepared. In fact, if you read Book 9, chapter 9, 57 through 62, you'll see several individuals who gave excuses for why they couldn't follow Jesus at the time. Read the passage and take note of how Jesus responded to them. It may surprise you. Now, since this is a young adult event, I know everybody got cell phones and got apps. And with this course, you can use it because that's what the world's going to now. So if you wouldn't mind, put out your Bibles on your phone or if you got a book and turn to Luke chapter 9, 57 through 62 and read it. And I want someone to tell me what this passage is saying. Or what excuses did you hear for them not wanting to follow Jesus? Chapter 9, 57 through 62. All right, can someone read it out loud? All right, can you read it over there? Yeah. Just chapter 9, 57, 62. Anybody can read it. As they were along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have knees and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to live He said to another man, Follow me. When he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. 
Okay, and what I want y'all to do is read the scenario and um, come up with what you would tell the person. And you can you incorporate scriptures.
How many people feel like there are tons of people trying to tell you how to do that? All the time. Live your life before it's in the way that God wants you to live your life. Read your word. It's like, honestly, it's important to have that relationship with God and pray and know how to listen to Him when He speaks back to you. Because everybody's going to tell you what to do. There's always going to be somebody trying to tell you what to do. Not saying that they're wrong, but at the end of the day, when you're confused and you don't know who to listen to, you just listen to God. And, and, and it, it really keeps the stress down. It really, it's just, it, it keeps you sane. It really does. Because you, you will want to be upset with certain people sometimes. Um, just two more scriptures. Psalms 55 and 22. Henry, you going you to look that up for me? I saw you grab your phone out of nothing. Okay. And then um, Matthew 6 and 33. Is he, can you read that one? Matthew 6 and 33. 55 and 22. But seek first the kingdom and the righteousness, and all these things will be good as well. Ask the brethren unto the Lord, and he shall stubborn be, he shall never suffer the righteousness to be moved. Yeah. Perfect. So perfect. Two scriptures that go with that. As she worried about marriage and medical school, she cast care of the Lord, seek God first, she don't have to worry about what the other people saying, what's going on. And that was good. Y'all did good with those. Now, he has committed to us the message of reconciliation, which is restoration of friendly relations. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, basically his representatives and his promoters, as though God were making this a true for us. We are his advertisers. Now, what are you advertising to others since we're Christ's advertisers? Now, part two. I'm going to try to get through this fast because I have an obsession in this weapon. Oh, you left it. Alright. Well, it's not quite 11 after 11, but I'm going to try to get through this fast anyway, though. Um, what are you eating? Spiritual versus worldly? Now, these are questions for y'all to think to yourselves. Uh, y'all yeah, have to answer them. Um, what do you feed your spirit? Does it edify Christ? Is it influential to the upbuilding of the kingdom? What do you allow your mind to focus on? What or who do you give most of your time to? Is God giving enough of your attention? What or who really has your heart, mind, and soul? Is Christ number one? How can you fix your focus? What do you need to eliminate out of your life? What is getting in between your walk with you and God? Just and stuff for you all to elaborate on and really think about. All right, now, we're all young adults. Now, I want to talk about social media because this is what they want me to discuss with y'all. So, I don't have an Instagram, but I do have a Facebook and I delete it myself. Now, I know most of y'all got Instagram, who doesn't have Instagram? I don't. See, you don't have Instagram? I don't. You do? Every year. Okay. Now, I'm sure pictures like this have rolled through y'all's screen. Stuff like this. Now, I wouldn't expect too many ladies to like this or put a little heart by it, whatever. But, guys, I know that this could be appealing. Not, not saying it's you, but I'm just saying the generation that we're in today. I would hope none of this applies to nobody. But, my question is, why would someone like this picture before they were like this picture? There's a difference between this picture and this picture. And someone tell me the difference between those two. It's a big difference. I mean, yeah, I mean, one of the other names is But, yeah, okay, okay, okay. That's where we're, that's where we're going. Why would Beyonce so? It's on both the idols. Okay. So, you know, in this generation, some of the items, most of the items, 
was I moving on. So yeah, so yeah. Okay. So I'm just so I'm just saying like I think that sometimes people they put like kingdom over Christ or they see them or they feel that because they are here on earth and we see them live every day or we're not physically living in the kingdom of Christ. Okay. Yes, another thing. Um, I know that there's some people that how could we make Christ more appealing as a feeling Beyonce? I mean, you gotta get the word out. But how? How can that see that's what the adults want? They want me to tell them what you all think and what would make it more appealing to this generation. To get y'all involved. I don't know what makes it more appealing, but I don't know what you mean about my friends that I ain't like. We're all Christians, y'all. We know God to a personal life. But it's like when we see a picture of Beyonce or like we'll see someone say like you post something like that, we don't go to it, we don't see a picture like that. Christ, like, I already know that. I already know that I have a personal relationship with God. Okay. And the people that I follow know that I have a personal relationship with God. You know, I like So I don't feel like you post it. So I only feel like you post it when I know that the people who I know, the people I know that I follow, have a relationship with God. Even like not even people, like God knows where your heart is at. I feel like I shouldn't have to. Yeah, I, don't, I feel like I shouldn't have to keep on getting the situation, like getting the word out when I know that if it comes towards me, I know I'm going to accept it and do it. Now, another thing that I want to talk about So many people chase after lust for things rather than what's love. Okay, ladies, I had to put a picture of y'all. Tyrese. <laughs> now, this, when I look at this, <laughs> yeah, like when I look at this, I'm like, you got that on camera. Right? Mama, it gets hotter in here. So, <laughs> but it's like we do it. We do it. We'll 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 like this and pass my picture of Christ and like, okay, that's a picture of Christ. Yeah, he does. I'm here. But we do it. And that's not, that is not good. That is not good at all. I mean, but then you gotta look at you know, it in the way. Yeah, look at it in the way. Not to say, not to say, right. Some people, um, like, I follow Tyrese on, um, on Facebook. Uh, yeah. Like, he, he do have, um, like, inspiration. He does, he does. Because I follow Facebook. Yeah. But I'm talking I, about the image. Yeah, I give it to you. I give it to you. I mean, you gotta look at it, like, in a way, like, like, I see people who, like, will just post something about God just to get the light. You know? Yeah. Like, okay. they'll post up, like, stupid stuff, and then they'll get, over a certain amount of life on a particular Jesus, you know, like we posted you know Jesus and I'm just like your heart's in the wrong place if you like just trying to do this just to get mm-hmm. your followers up or your life up. Like, so when I see something like that, I feel like I don't need to post it because I know that his heart is in the right place just because he he would never do it if he knew that he would get the followers again. You say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well how would you determine the thing what? To know if somebody's doing it just to get their followers up and their likes up I mean, versus somebody who's really doing it because they're committed to work. I mean, because I follow pastors on um, I follow pastors on Instagram, and it's like I know that their hearts in the right place. So when they put up a picture of Jesus, I know that. So like when that, like when, I, when they put up a picture of Jesus, I know that they're serious about it and that they're actually trying to get the word out about God. But then. When I saw my friends that goes out every night and you know, like has that go smoking, drinking, and then they put up a random picture of Jesus and they're like repost if you love Jesus. And I'm just like you're really not if you don't even try to live by what you're saying. So I don't understand how you're gonna like tell me to live by Jesus. It's going back to the same evangelism. Like if I know that you're not living in the way of Jesus, how are you gonna tell me to repost something that you're not even living by? So it's like so I mean, but you have to make sure, I mean, you can't really worry about what other people aren't doing. But you have to be accountable for yourself. At the end of the day, if you repost it, you really love Jesus in your heart, it doesn't matter if the person before you post it isn't living right. As long as you're living right. At the end of the day, you want to be an example to someone else. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Now, I said Jesus Christ can change your life. 
I, I pretty much would like that. I think I would put the like button on that. Did y'all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Might as well put it up there because we scroll past pictures like this too. It's, I don't know if y'all can see it, but it says the sexiest thing a man can do for his woman is crawl inside her mind and make her imagination run wild. That's not sexy when you're not married at all. It shouldn't hit the like button on that when you're not married. And then it's, it's not even, it, it's, it's very, yeah, who said it? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's graphic, I think that's what he said. It's very graphic. No man, ladies, should be crawling in your mind. Or all. anything else. Exactly. No man should be crawling in your mind. Or in your body. <laughs> If, and if he's, he's like Christ, he he pretty much would want to crawl in your mind and in your body. And nobody from here is married besides Ashley. Besides Ashley. This is unacceptable. Unacceptable. We. Now, I would hope anyone in here don't smoke. But. When I was in high school, I tried it. I'm not afraid to say that, you all. I try to look at me, but I'm just being honest because y'all need to see a result of what God can do. Y'all need to know because adults will sit here and they will discuss this stuff, but they won't say what they've done. They will hide. A lot of y'all parents done did this. They done had sex before marriage. Probably had some of us out of wedlock. But it, it's reality. It is what it is, and I'm not here to sugarcoat anything or hide anything from you all. It's, it's life, and it needs to be talked about. Um, but most people would like this picture. Whoever liked Wiz Khalifa, they would like the picture because he's Wiz Khalifa. They probably would like it just because he's smoking it. Some people would like the picture because he's smoking it. Now, how many of y'all think that smoking weed is okay? That it's not nothing wrong with it. That is not a sin. Because I've came across plenty of people who don't think that it's a sin. Who don't think that it's a sin. Okay. But, I mean, it, I mean, it's, 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 um, it's basically how that person reacts after his action when they how They go out and do negative things. Yeah. Uh, it's but, simple. But, I mean, like I said, the Bible says it's mind-altering drugs, yeah. But the Bible does say, and I don't know which scripture it is, mm -hmm. um, about inheriting the kingdom of God. And it lists a couple of things. And this is sorcery. Sorcery. And a lot of people say, well, I don't see weed in the Bible. I don't see weed in the Bible. Okay. It's not written as weed. It's written as sorcery. Mm -hmm. And sorcery is basically our mind off from drugs, things that you wouldn't be sober under the influence of, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it the same. It's mind off from It's mind off from And that's pretty much, I try to explain it to people, but then they was like, well, it's on the earth, and da 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 Everything that's put on the earth wasn't meant to be, you know, right. yeah, used, or it wasn't meant for good, you know. People can make good things bad. Or it was meant to be on the earth, but then people made it into something else. <laughs> they made it I, into that. I guess. But <laughs> I know what I'm saying. I mean, that that's my interpretation of it. I know y'all seen these pictures. <laughs> I, I mean, I've liked a few of them. Because they be funny, you know. But, I mean, I don't, like I said, on Instagram, these pictures don't really be on Facebook at all. But, and I had to find the lamest one I could find because the rest of them were just too, too much to touch. But, who would like to this honestly? Okay, because <laughs> it's funny, right? Yeah. But in the day, it's an f fine crack. I mean, I'm not going to repost it. I mean, a lot of stuff, I like Bible and repost it on my page. And stuff. Right. I just like my name keep scrolling. But don't you think this is an attraction? I think... So what, like, this is a Christmas part, or is this... No, it's... Oh, you said, how this is a distraction? It's, it's, you were, it's, it's a distraction from... No. You said what? Like, it's something that you will want to be just here. Exactly. Wait, wait. I don't see that. I, mean, I thought it was humor, like, I don't know. It, it is humor. I mean, there's a lot of humor. Like, they could have put non-Christians to be like, 
But this is this is what the generation is focused on. Liking pictures and stuff that's it just doesn't make any sense. Like so we have to do that. We really do. Because we're focusing on stuff like this when and I know y'all heard about Mike Brown. Mike Brown, Mike Brown. Anybody hasn't anybody hasn't heard about Mike Brown? How he got shot in the street. Y'all looking like Oh no, we all okay. Okay. Like stuff like that is going on and we're on Instagram. They throwing riots and things like that. But what does that do? They're fighting the wrong way. God's word says we don't fight against, you know, flesh and blood, but spiritual, you know, and spirits and heavenly grounds and things like that. So instead of them throwing riots, they need to be praying. We don't know how to fight. And that's the issue. It's, it's getting bad. Alright, success and personal image. What is your brand? Does anybody know what I mean by that? What is your brand? You're talking about like No, your brand. Like, out. What do people, when people see you, what is, like, what is your brand? If you have Jergens, brand, lotion, stuff, that's an example, stuff Can like that. People, people A brand. Let's see. Um, Ralph. Yeah. Oh no. Ralph. You said Ralph. That's money. Ralph Lauren. Yeah, that's oh, a brand. I mean, no, like, she was saying if I can get people. Like when they, you know, like I, I get what you're saying with brands are, but like how would the person you're able to have? Oh. You are what? Like something like that. Yeah, I was about to describe. You're talking like what you're wearing or how people see you? No, no, how people see you. Oh. Like, okay, what's Oprah's brand? Or Oprah's brand. <laughs> like yeah, what is oh, your brand? Really? What do you what do you put across the people when people look at you and they see you? Oh. What do they know you for? Oh, so somebody drug addict, they bring drug addict. People know me for being funny. Though. Like okay, oh, Make, like that's something for you to think about. Is your brand something positive or is it something negative? Okay. Um, dress where you're going in life. It's important that we look at it's where pretty much where you go. Now sometimes we run out to store. Or something wrong with it. But if you're going somewhere, look like where you're going, you know. Where are you know? How are you known? Sorry. Is it for the way you carry yourself or what you wear or both? Are you always late or on time? Are some things inappropriate to wear to church? I just I had to throw that question in. I mean I know y'all know things are inappropriate to church, but be mindful of the words you use. What is being professional? What do your friends think about the way you carry yourself? So anybody know what professionalism is? Professional. Uh, do you know what being professional is? Uh, yeah. It's not just looks, it's being on time and the whole package is there. You learn more about that. Okay, life enjoyment. I made this pretty much session and sweet because I can't really tell you how to enjoy your life because it's real life. But think of all of what you like to do and ask God, can you do it? He'll give you an answer. It's okay to have fun as long as it's not displeasing Christ. If you feel like it's wrong and that it's a sin and your conscience is saying don't do it, then do not contemplate with the Holy Spirit. If you're going somewhere and you know something that's ain't right and I don't need to know if I even do this or that, then don't do it. If you contemplate, it's the Holy Spirit telling you don't do it. And always remember, I get this from the old people. Always remember, wherever you go, take God with you. And where you can't take him, do not go. There's plenty of places we can't take him nowadays. Mm-hmm. Right, so like, when you're contemplating, so like, I went to a party one time with me and my friends. And I told my friends about to do something that I knew that he, like, that his parents wouldn't be accepted of. Like, wouldn't that? That we both know that if any one of us did it, we will go back and follow him like later on. So like we will make it feel person doesn't know it's wrong to do. So what if God told you so what if you're contemplating with God, but you know that he put you there to probably stop that person? So like, so, yeah. so like what if like you contemplate going back so because I didn't want to go to the party in the first place, but 
I knew that if I went, that he would go. I knew that he would have to But I went because he went, and I saw him for so long. So does that mean that I want to be the rest of the party? Why not be constantly a good guy to go to the party? Well, is it always a bad thing to be constantly a good guy? I mean, everybody pretty much does it. It's, it's basically how you get guidance as to what you should do. Now, you didn't want to go, but you went because he went. Now, and then I stopped it. And that's good. I mean, it's how you can go. I'm not saying, okay, that's another thing. I'm not saying, don't, yeah. Are you glad? How do you? I'm glad I went after this. Okay, well, how did you conduct yourself at a party? That's really what, because if you go to parties, it's how you really conduct yourself. And you can't help people around the world. Either. I mean, and good you did help your friend. You were there to do that. But it's pretty much about how you conduct yourself when you go to certain places. So. Well, it's not like that. So it's not like that. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's People would tell you differently. I mean, I've, I was always told, conduct yourself as a lady as a woman when you go out. I, that's what I've always been told. Um, some people would say it's a sin to go party, you know, go out and stuff like that. I, I mean, y'all want to speak on that, some of the older people? Because, like, Ashley, you want to say something on that? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's really... I don't know if I would just because of the temptation that's around you. I mean, yeah. there's so much that could be, they could be drinking, they could be smoking, and you don't want to surround yourself in that, just that type of atmosphere. So I wouldn't do it regardless of if I'm going with the intention of acting like somebody, I still probably wouldn't do it just because of what could be going on in the atmosphere that you don't want to get caught up in. So I don't want, I don't want to tell y'all the wrong thing. <laughs> and somebody else, but personally, I do not party, I do not drink, I do not smoke. I've done that first for years, but now that my life has changed and I'm loving the new person that I am, I don't desire to do those things anymore. So that's that's the best way I can explain that. Productivity. What can you do on your spare time? Now, these are some things you can do in your spare time that isn't a waste of time. Read the Bible, study, pray, exercise, put in some college applications if you're around that age or level. Um, put in job applications, research your career field, you know something you want to do. Continue to keep looking to see what's the demand for your career by the time you graduate. I mean, I keep, I go on, I forgot what website it was, but I go on there all the time to check and see if the percentage of them needing what I want to do has changed or went down so I know what I need to consider another career or not. Research ways to budget your money, and that's very well needed when you're in college. Work on time management, make a short and long-term goals list and work towards it. How many of y'all have done this already? Everybody has done some of this. You haven't done nothing on this book? I mean, if you have it, that's fine. I'm not, you know, I'm just asking. Like, you have? Oh. The company you keep. Are your friends a good influence on you and others? Are you a good influence on your friends? How well do you all handle the conflict as a whole, you and your friends? Do they respect your decision to stand alone at times? Do you feel comfortable talking about Christ with them or vice versa? Do you know? to say no. Okay, now how many of y'all friends are very influential in a way that it's like, oh my God, why y'all trying to make me do this? You don't have friends like that? Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah we have friends like that. We all, we all. I don't really have that. friends like that because most of my friends, uh, I know their parents and their parents go <laughs> to hotel. <laughs> yeah, go to hotel. <laughs> Because um, I have a friend that I usually, I sometimes go to his house and I sometimes stay the night. And he always tries, like, because he does things that he knows that his stepmom would not like. And me and his stepmom 
he thinks we connect better than him and her connect. So he often does things to like throw me off and her not have favor over me just because we have a better connection. And it's something that he gets aggravated when, when she tells him to do something and he has questions, but he won't do his work. So I have to help him with that. And he gets, I have to influence him. He doesn't try to influence me on things. I have to influence him. When you and your friends have a conflict, everyone does it. You, you and your friends all have had a conflict as a whole very well. Like, if y'all were going to McDonald's and the girl asked her to catch the attitude when she was driving, and are y'all in the backseat saying, Oh, go walk on so and so? Or are right, y'all saying, Don't, don't do that? Da, da, what y'all doing? I'm pushing each other up. It all depends on what it is. So it's like, if it's like that, I'm losing my like, job. This is, you might even want to see the rest of your life. Like, you're working at the job. Well, for females, I mean, dudes, y'all, y'all different. But that's more of a female. I don't know. My friends aren't like that. Like, you know, I, I've been saying it's like that. You're we would be. Off, freshman year, I'll be in the back seat with somebody called. We're going to do it. Just see, go on and talk. Like, for real. Now, let's not come up to the squash and fight. I'm leaving. <laughs> Okay, okay, another one. When you don't want to go somewhere with your friends, do they be upset and be like, man, you lame? Yes. Lame. <laughs> Look, that's the trick of the enemy. Stand, learn to stand alone. Please learn to stand alone. Because, yes, you may say that they're your friends, but in the day, nine times out of ten, out of the five friends that you may hang around, maybe one may be really, really real. Or two. Maybe not all of them. Not saying this is fine to everyone, but some people all five friends are true. But when you you're gonna notice as you get older and you get to college or wherever you go, the friends you had freshman year, the friends you had high school won't be your friends later. Like they they come and go. They really come and go. So you have to have a mind of your own and stand alone. And these are uh, I'm gonna leave you with these three key points. Equip, win, and build. Those are the main three things that I want you all to walk away and remember, you don't remember nothing else from this whole session. I want y'all to write these down. Each one of y'all to, to take with y'all. Equip yourselves for battle. Oh, sorry. Equip yourselves for battle. Just preparate the preparation to witness. He appears. When, when the souls of your peers and others through Christ. Always remember God's story, your story, and their story. That's the best way you can reach them. And the last one, build. Build each other up in Christ. We're all part of